The Raritan Bay, on the border of New York and New Jersey, provides important habitat for birds, aquatic species, and other wildlife. My name is Captain Paul Eidman, and I'm a local resident here in New Jersey. I grew up fishing Raritan Bay and the surrounding waters. We catch striped bass, weak fish, bluefish, summer flounder, false albacore, bonito, pretty much everything that swims around here. The bay lies at the boundary of New York State and New Jersey, meaning that leaders from both states need to work together to shape the future of the bay and the communities that surround it. On my trips, I leave New Jersey, I fish New York, I come back and fish New Jersey waters. What makes Raritan Bay such a great fishing spot is, is its shape. It, it's triangular. And at each of the points of the triangle, you have tributaries that feed in nutrients. What happens is it goes right up the food chain. So you have all, this, all these nutrients and then you have little fish feeding the big fish and it's just, it's the best spot. This is an urban, a formerly a, an industrial you know, mayhem that's turned into you know, fishing paradise. It's almost impossible to talk about Raritan Bay without, without really looking at its past. You know, there was a time, if you go back a few years, when pollution was really impacting that. But because the harbor and the Raritan and Sandy Hook Bays have become a lot cleaner, you've seen the oysters and, uh, and clams and a lot of seafood, as well as fish, come back. It is true that almost every species of fish that was found here in colonial days still exists in these waterways. We have migratory fish like shad, alewife, blueback herring, striped bass, and American eel still making their way upriver through this bay to their historic spawning grounds. This used to be a very dirty bay, oil spills, oil sheens on the water. The bay is much cleaner now thanks to, all, thanks to all these enforced regulations. It's really, really important to make sure the water quality is safe every time someone goes into the water. Clean water, once you lose that, it's, it's much more expensive to try to get it back to where you had it than to um, you know, just preserve and maintain or improve it. You cannot have a vibrant, sustainable economy without clean water. It's so important to measure water quality and make sure that we're heading in the right direction. This has been a challenge in the state of New Jersey and the state of New York. If we can really work together to drive improvements in water quality, we're gonna be leaving a much better, better legacy for our kids and our grandkids. Every year, millions of people visit Raritan Bay. By its nature, it's in one of the most populated area, areas on the planet. It's because of its location and its beauty. Uh, you have recreational interest, commercial interest, so an extraordinary amount of uh, diversity in the bay from every angle, and I think that's one of uh, Raritan Bay's strongest assets. Raritan Bay and both, and we're talking about the South Shore, Staten Island, and then obviously the Raritan Bay Shore in New Jersey, has always had a really strong tradition of public access and accessibility to the waterfront. This is where the majority of people live, this is where they choose to live, this is where they choose to recreate, and it's really important that we're providing safe and accessible shorelines and waterways for them to do that. And especially after Hurricane Sandy, when we're looking to put in these hard shorelines or berms or walls, um, and which is important to protect the communities in some cases, but you need to make sure that it doesn't disconnect the communities from that waterfront. I'm talking about getting your feet wet, going in the marsh, crabbing and fishing and enjoying nature and, and taking pictures, you know, or whatever you want to do, but having direct access to the water. Hurricane Sandy really, really tortured the back end of the bay. It's Richmond County, and that's like, it was like ground zero. That's exactly where the, the, the front edge of the storm hit. This root structure that I was talking about that holds fish is vitally important to holding the bay in place and to prevent that shoreline from encroaching on, you know, our, our homes. So if you're going to build, build this. So I traveled to Raritan Bay after Hurricane Sandy and I saw the damage that was done, the damage to people, to homes, also to an EPA federal Superfund site. What you're looking at was really destroyed uh, during Sandy and if you were here, uh, you know, almost three years ago now, you'd see all the boats were just, you know, strewn all over the place. Right, yeah. How do we rebuild in a way that acknowledges that we're living in an era uh, where we're going to have more violent weather because of climate change? And how do we make sure that we don't make the this, this mistakes that we've made in the past in terms of where we choose to build or not to build? If we're going to make coastal resilient structures like beaches and dunes, 
we need to infuse them with the kinds of habitat components that are essential to wildlife so that we can have our protection of our shoreline and our infrastructure, our homes, our lives, and also have that wildlife and have that ability to go out and say, hey, look what I just saw today out on the beach. When I think about cooperation of improving habitats in Raritan Bay, I think about the great efforts of New Jersey, and I think about the great efforts of New York, but I don't necessarily think about them actually coming together and working as a unified element. I think about them each doing their own individual part, but maybe it's about time that they actually linked and joined together and did projects or a series of projects or created policies that together strengthened and improved the base habitat. It's, it's really important for New Jersey and New York to get together. I mean, we, we both border the same waterway. It, it shouldn't be, hey, this is New York or this is New Jersey. It, this is our bet. It's together. Bay does not have geopolitical ge designation. A bay exists outside of political boundaries. Any body of water uh, that is located along state boundaries uh, has to be cooperatively managed. Looking over that way, you see Staten Island, so this is also by state, obviously, between New York and New Jersey, and we have to work together to make sure that it's clean and that the environment's in good shape. Raritan Bay is truly one of the, the, uh, the greatest estuaries on the globe. Well, the Raritan Bay means a lot to me. I mean, it's, it's first of all, it's just beautiful, and I enjoy being on the Raritan Bay. I was impressed with how much all those people loved the bay. They loved the bay, they loved everything about it. People should concentrate on protecting this wonderful bay. It's the most wonderful bay in, in eastern North America, in my opinion. If someone asked me what's Raritan Bay mean to me, it's like, it means everything. It's like, it's a whole world of life. It's, it's, uh, it's about having something that that you can hand down to your kids and their kids and you know and feel really positive about it. I definitely feel that Raritan Bay is a, is a hidden treasure, uh, a jewel if you will, um, but it definitely lacks attention. It's like the, the house plant in the corner that doesn't get watered enough. <laughs> I love Raritan Bay. I love Raritan Bay. I love Raritan Bay. I love Raritan Bay. I love the Raritan Bay. Love the Raritan Bay. I love everything in the bay and I want to keep it clean. I love Raritan Bay. <laughs>